This $480 million grant where MCC do approve for Saloon. Now one way come with strong benchmark condition them. Where the MCC say for up and throughout the five year where these grants will do for. And according to the agreements, if governments of Salon fail for implement any of them condition yeah, the MCC go hold the money force. But within a them condition they yeah. are. Brian David Ons, now the US ambassador na Salon, he explain. First are what I would call the technical conditions. The agreement has to be ratified by Sierra Leone's parliament. We have to receive notification that in fact it has been duly ratified and entered into force under Sierra Leonean law. The second aspects are really energy specific. Um, in negotiation with the Sierra Leonean government, the Millennium Challenge Corporation and they have agreed on a number of steps that the government will take to reform the power sector prior to entry into force of the compact. The third condition is one that exists in every one of our compacts, and that is that Sierra Leone has to continue to meet the eligibility requirements for MCC um, on, for the life of the compact. And those eligibility requirements, as you know, really focus in three areas. One, it's investing in people, which talks about how you're doing in terms of health, education, trade, policy, inflation, those sorts of issues. Secondly, the anti-corruption provision. Um, we have to see that Sierra Leone is continuing to effectively combat corruption and make progress in that area. And then third, and the one that I have talked about, I think ad nauseum at this point, is the requirement for ruling justly, which in the case of Sierra Leone, most importantly, means that, they, that the country continues to move forward and adopt the recommendations that are contained in the final report of the Tripartite Commission on Electoral Reform and fully implements the agreement for national unity. Um, so those are the conditions that have to move forward before the compact, quote unquote, enters into force. Ambassador Brian David Ons continues to say, this money nuggets for Kana Salon governments they and directly, as they will disperse some small, small, to the one them, where they do the work. After we then go don't go through procurement and other process them. The US Ambassador Semueso say right now, then they begin the pre-design, visibility study, environmental impact assessment, and other paperwork them. So the parliament look inside the agreement and self governments do all waiting then suppose for do for make these grants work fine. But because these grants are for improve on the country electricity sector, plenty of people do ask if Salon go begin get 24 hour light, where this work done. And where journalists they ask Ambassador Brian David Hunt this question, now this na be respond. We would not be embarking on spending $480 million if we did not believe it would bring reliable electricity to the vast majority of the 8 billion people living in Sierra Leone. Um, it would not be tenable for us as the U.S. government to expend that kind of money if we didn't have that degree of confidence. Now, 24-7 electricity, I can't even guarantee that when a hurricane hits Tennessee. Um, so I'm not going to make you a promise that you will always have 24-hour electricity because crises happen. Um, weather events happen. Bad things happen sometimes and electricity goes out. What I can say is that it will be reliable. It will not be going out simply because there is no generation or there is no power line that goes to your part of the country. Um, so that's what the MCC is intended to do, is to build that backbone outwards so that you have the infrastructure to be able to do that. After we Ambassador Brian David Ons talk say, light business will improve, but in not assure salon people and say, it will be 24 hours because at times, things like can happen, we will unbog electricity. So he say, now that make then encourage government for putting them in place for make people go to get light all time. And in confirm say, salon government don't volunteer for give $14.2 million for add to the $480 million where the MCC they give for make this project work fine and give affordable lights to salon people. But waiting gets for happen after the five year where this project go done done. That's na question where the MCC country director Stephen D. Gouda be respond to for sake of sustainability na the energy sector.
A big part of sustainability of any public good is transparent financial management. And so that's something that the compact is going to be you know, supporting to um, continue to strengthen in the energy sector. Uh, famously, the, the quote is, you can't manage what you don't measure, right? So helping everyone understand the data, the, the numbers in, in, the, in the sector, um, and being able to actually capture the revenue that is coming in, uh, apportion it appropriately so that an appropriate amount is set aside for operations and maintenance. Uh, we're going to be pushing for that, to seeing best practices in that, developing and, and even being implemented during the compact itself. Mm -hmm. um, we think there's some progress to be made in that space, and, and so uh, we're going to be using compact funds to bring in some of the best experts to help advise the government and the utility leadership on how to go about that. Um, as well as investing heavily in capacity building and in training. Um, you know, if you think about the, the one utility EGTC, um, this compact, I think, will totally transform EGTC because the transmission assets are going to increase dramatically. And so that team is going to need to build a lot of transmission management capacity. And that's something that the compact will be investing in. The MCC Konski director, Stephen D. Guda, and OPSI, they don't encourage salon governments for work with the private sector for make they use this money for the right purpose. For Liberty Online TV, Mina Princess Pia's reports.